Hello everyone, welcome to the Tekken Auto Show. I'm your host Manav Sinha and it is so good to see all you lovely people once again. Just like every time, this time as well, there's a lot of action lined up for you guys, both from the world of technology as well as automobiles. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the action by showing you a glimpse of what you can expect in the next half an hour. This week, an electric car that could replace the normal ones you see every day. A tablet that can replace the Apple iPad that we all know and love and a laptop that will replace your gaming PC dreams. So yes, all of that action is coming your way and yes, we are going to start off with the Hyundai Kona Electric because if I were to list down some of the most anticipated car launches of this year then the Hyundai Kona Electric will spot right at the top and there are some pretty good reasons for it. A. It is supposed to be a pretty good car generally and second, it is an electric car. Maybe the one that we've been waiting for. Well, I got a chance to drive it around at the Bodh International Circuit and here's my thoughts about it. Everyone is talking about electric vehicles. Those who are against pollutions are talking about it. Government officials are talking about it. Industry experts are talking about it. Everyone is talking about electric vehicles. But here's the thing. While everyone is talking about it, can you associate a car to that name? Well, hold on to that thought until unless you meet the Hyundai Kona because this might be the best value for money electric car in India right now. Well, if the word Hyundai Kona sounds familiar to you, then it is because there is a regular Hyundai Kona which comes with regular petrol and diesel engines internationally and has been on sale since last year. India, however, gets this, the electric version of the Hyundai Kona. And there's a lot to talk about this car. Let's start with the way it looks. The first thing that will catch your attention is the face of the car which is different because there is no grille up front as there is no need of a radiator as there isn't a regular combustion engine under the hood. What you get instead is this fine detailing up front that looks fantastic and also houses the charging port which can only be opened when the car is unlocked. The daytime running lights are housed up top which is seamlessly connected and the headlamps are placed down below. Coming to the side, you will see a lot of body gladding which gives it a bit of a rugged look. But the highlight are those wheels which look terrific and almost as if they belong to a concept car. At the back, you get smart looking LED tail lamps. The indicators, reverse light and the rear fog lamp are housed down below and is encompassed by again a huge amount of body cladding. Overall, the car looks amazing and futuristic and yet not so different and out of place as if it is screaming that it is an electric car. And this continues even when you step inside the Kona as there is nothing weird or different except that there is no gear lever protruding out of the center console. Instead, you operate the car through these four buttons. Other than that, the cabin feels familiar to a high-end Hyundai car and the build quality, finishing and the quality of products used is top-notch as well, giving the cabin a premium feel. There are enough compartment spaces all around and it gets the ergonomics spot on. You also get things like a push button start, electronic parking brake and a wireless charging pad for your smartphone that is cleverly concealed when not needed. Then there's also heated as well as cooled seats for both passenger and the driver which is a great addition. Lastly, the seats are electronically adjustable, the outside rear view mirrors are heated and in case you are wondering, yes you get a large electric sunroof as well. But it is not all perfect inside the Hyundai Kona. You see, with all that body cladding, it does appear like a big car in pictures and all, but in reality, it isn't exactly that big. It's only marginally wider and longer than the Hyundai Venue, but in terms of height, it is even shorter. And this becomes evident when you notice the amount of space inside the Kona. At the back, the legroom on offer is something that you would expect out of a decently sized hatchback really. And while the boot space can be extended by folding down the seats, the 332 litre capacity is nothing to write home about. What the Kona makes up with, however, is the fact that it is an electric car that will probably not give you range anxiety. It gets a 39.2 kilowatt hour battery that makes equivalent of 136 PS of power and 395 Newton meters of torque. As per Hyundai, the battery can be charged up from 0 to 100% through the complimentary wall-mounted AC charger that you get with the car in about 6 hours of time and can charge up a range of 50 km in 1 hour. You also get a portable charger that can be plugged into any regular power socket that gives a range of 50 km in 3 hours and takes 19 hours to charge the battery completely. And finally, there is the DC fast charger that will be placed at Hyundai showrooms and select fuel pumps 
that can charge the car from 0 to 100 percent in just under an hour. What's impressive is that Hyundai is claiming a range of 452 kilometers with this battery, and that sounds fabulous. However, we drove the car at both international circuit, which is far from an ideal city scenario. So we will have to test out the Hyundai Kona in real-world driving conditions to see what kind of range it offers and how easy it is to keep it charged through everyday usage. But since we were driving at the Bodh International Circuit, what we can talk about is driving dynamics. First, the only thing different that you have to do while driving this car is to remember that the paddle shifter on this one doesn't actually shift between gears because well this is an electric car what they do instead is that they alter the regenerative braking which can be adjusted to four levels the left paddle turns it up the right one turns it down if you turn it down to zero the car will feel as if it is coasting when you let go of the accelerator if it is at one it feels like a regular combustion engine powered car giving you the feel of regular engine braking level two takes it a step further and level 3 feels as if the car is braking gently when you leave the accelerator. Interestingly, you can also simply brake using the left paddle shifter if you hold it continuously, which means you can simply drive the Kona using the accelerator pedal and one paddle shifter. Now how cool is that? And when it comes to the driving part, well, the Hyundai Kona actually drives like any other car. The only difference is that the car feels extremely refined and smooth as there are no vibrations whatsoever anywhere in the car. If you bring it to a standstill, you wouldn't even know that the car is turned on or not. It is that refined. There is no typical engine sound either, but instead there is this mild humming sound that comes from the engine bay, something similar to a turbine engine. The only sound while driving that you get is from the tires and while at first everything feels eerily silent, it is actually very calming and something you may not mind at all. Think of it as putting on some really good noise cancelling headphones. In the corners too, the Kona is very stable due to the low centre of gravity thanks to its mid-mounted battery pack. There is only slight body roll but the car feels planted and the brakes on it are fantastic. Keep in mind that the tyres on this are low rolling resistance tyres which basically swaps a little bit of cornering grip for better efficiency and range. Something that will be evident in say rainy conditions or when you are at a racetrack. And that is the Hyundai Kona for you. It is priced at an introductory price of 25.3 lakh which might seem expensive at first but remember electric vehicles are generally more expensive than combustion engine powered cars. And once you think of it that way and see the things that this car is offering the prices doesn't seem all that overkill anymore. So to sum up the entire Hyundai Kona electric SUV experience, well it has almost everything going for it. First, it's electric so those who are concerned about pollution can sleep well at night. Second, it has a fantastic range so those who are concerned about range can sleep well at night as well. Third, it's an SUV which we Indians love. And fourth, it is a great value for money car not just as an electric car but a car in general. So without a doubt, the Hyundai Kona is a very impressive car. So yes, the Hyundai Kona delivers on its expectations, but it will be interesting to see whether people actually go out and buy themselves an electric vehicle. Anyway, let's move on to the world of technology. Now, if you want to get yourself a tablet, chances are that you might be buying the Apple iPad. But what if you didn't want a tablet from the house of Apple? Well, Vishal has got his hands on an Android tablet, which he believes is the best one you can buy. Take a look. It has been a long time since we saw any movement in the Android tablet space. In fact, it's been a very long time. That basically meant if you wanted a hybrid computing device that can be a tablet and a laptop replacement, you were looking at something like the Apple iPad or the Microsoft Surface lineup of devices. That changes now with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5e. This can be a tablet when you want it to be one and simply dock it on a keyboard and it becomes a laptop replacement. I have no hesitation in saying this is an extremely likable Android computing device. Let's find out what I'm mentioning. So how much does the experience cost you? In India, Samsung has listed two variants of the Galaxy Tab S5e. The entry spec variant has Wi-Fi only with 4GB of RAM, 64GB of internal storage, a micro SD card option to expand this space up to 512GB, 
and three color options which are black, silver and gold. This is priced at 35,999 rupees. The second variant retains the same specs as before but also adds the LTE option. This is called the Galaxy Tab S5e LTE. This is priced at rupees 39,999. It really is a no-brainer that you should consider spending that little bit extra to get the Galaxy Tab S5e LTE since it is a lot more versatile. I mean, why wouldn't you? In terms of the design, the first look at the Galaxy Tab S5e and there is a lot to take in. It is slimmer than I had imagined and it feels really upmarket both in terms of the design and the finish. The metal unibody is one of the reasons for that. It is just 5.5 mm thin and weighs only 400 grams, depending on which variant you select. Considering it's a tablet, that's a great weight. In fact, this looks a lot more like the expensive sibling, the Galaxy Tab S4, and that is great news. I would imagine that one of the reasons why you want to buy this Samsung Galaxy Tab is the versatility that it offers. It's a hybrid device, which means it's a tablet when you want to carry it around wherever you go. And when you reach office, perhaps you can simply dock it on this keyboard and it becomes a very competent laptop replacement. Now, the thing with this is a compact keyboard is not usually the best when it comes to a typing experience. It's usually compromised in the way that the keys are not good enough and you're not able to type quickly. Samsung has managed to get this spot on. The key size and the key spacing is ideal and every key press elicits a very consistent response. In fact, I switched over from my MacBook Pro as a default laptop for office work for a while and it's very easy to get used to this one. The comfort and the versatility that it offers really is top notch. However, I couldn't help but notice that the folio itself isn't cut out exactly in line with the tab side spines, which means it partially gets in the way of the recessed bar key. Secondly, at times the magnet did not feel strong enough and the folio detached from the tablet if it was being moved around. The screen real estate is as impressive as it can be. What you get is a 10.5 inch Super AMOLED display. The colors pop out just right with deep blacks, great contrast and this can be really bright too. Under the hood is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 670 processor. Before you worry about this not being a flagship chip, mind you, the performance that we experienced using this laptop replacement on a typical day at work did not exhibit any sort of sluggishness, slowdowns or stutters. Yes, it is possible to be a bit pedantic and say that the apps open a few milliseconds slower than Galaxy Tab S4 for instance, but that would simply be nitpicking. This is a top-notch Android tablet that very effortlessly becomes a full-fledged computing device the instant you demand it. A lot of that brilliance has to do with Samsung's One UI wrapper around Android. It goes a long way in simplifying the layout, clearing up the clutter, and introducing the relief of white space from time to time. That said, you might feel that the app icons on the home screen and the app drawer are a bit too spaced out from time to time, and there really isn't much you can do about it. Saving the best for the last, aren't we? We are talking about the Samsung DeX mode. Now, what is the DeX mode? This is essentially a desktop-like feeling that you will get when using Android on this Samsung tablet. Samsung has basically added this on onto Android to enhance the productivity aspect of this tablet, which is also a hybrid. You will get everything that you've perhaps used on a Windows laptop all along. You get a full app drawer, you get the ability to minimize apps, you open multiple windows of the same app, the whole lot. For me, this worked very well because most of my workflow apps work with the DeX mode. This includes the Microsoft productivity suite, the Android productivity suite, Skype, the whole lot. One can always nitpick and say that this isn't a genuine computing experience since there are still Android apps working with DeX and whatnot. But the point is simple. It is great to have an Android device that can stand up to the likes of the Microsoft Surface Go and the Apple iPad for instance. Not just as a rival but perhaps even an alternative. All things considered, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5e works like a charm and that is priceless. So finally an Android tablet that can replace possibly the Apple tablet as well. But what if you want to replace your gaming desktop with a gaming laptop? Well Kunal believes that the Acer Predator Helios 500 might be your best bet. So let's take a look at that.
When it comes to gaming laptops, you usually rely on Intel processors. But Acer might just change your mind. The Helios 500 comes with an AMD processor and an AMD GPU, both of which are desktop class. Now, is this worth your money? We are going to find out right now. Like the more budget-friendly Predator Helios 300, the Helios 500 is a chunky machine with trim corners long with silver and blue accents, giving it a gaming-oriented personality. It's a monster of a notebook with 38mm of thickness, 4kg of weight, and with that 17.3-inch display, portability is not a very strong suit here. The reason for that humongous size is because Acer has crammed in a desktop class AMD Ryzen 7 2700 processor along with Radeon RX Vega 56 graphics. The configuration sent to us includes 32GB of DDR4 RAM, expandable to 64GB with a 256GB SSD and an additional 1TB hard drive. You can alternatively choose for an Intel Core i9 variant with Nvidia's GTX 1070 graphics. The notebook also comes with a host of ports, including 3 USB 3.0, 2 USB-C ports, a full-size HDMI and display port, and an Ethernet jack. The 17.3-inch matte display looks great and offers a 1080p resolution with a 144Hz refresh rate, though I wish it was a bit more bright. As for performance, you can throw almost any AAA gaming title and the Helios 500 can have it for breakfast. I got about 80 to 90 frames per second on Rise of Tomb Raider on high settings and 70 to 80 frames per second on very high settings. Even PUBG delivered average frame rates of 90 FPS going up to 110. The best part is that the display is G-Sync enabled, which makes the gaming experience quite smooth with no frame tearing. The hardware is also excellent for heavy video editing as well as photo editing purposes. Now, AMD has a history of offering products that usually run very hot and deliver below average battery life. This notebook comes with two fans to cool the high-performance hardware and even has a special warning around the exhaust. While I didn't notice the machine overheating all that much, battery life clogged just over an hour, which is not surprising for a fully loaded gaming notebook. Other notable features include two speakers on the front side edges and a bottom firing subwoofer with WaveMax audio. There's also an illuminated ring around the touchpad and of course an LED backlit keyboard with 4-zone lighting. The chiclet style keyboard is spacious and comes with full-size arrow keys with a numpad. There's also a dedicated row of 5 hotkeys above the keyboard which can control 3 different commands and lets you configure macros for your games. Then there is Acer's Predator Sense software which gives you a bunch of controls including fan speed, backlight settings and so on. Priced at 2,20,000 for the way in that we got, this machine definitely lives up to its name. The MD version of the Predator Helios is definitely a great performer and from what we've heard is better than the Intel variant. So the Predator Helios 500 is a beast when it comes to gaming performance. Not just that, you can also use it for editing purposes as it offers excellent performance. This is by far one of the best AMD laptops that I've tried so far. The only alternative that I could suggest right now is the Dell Alienware 17, which is a beast when it comes to gaming performance.